Welcome to part one of the GrizzOps tutorial series. In this video, we will cover the software I use, the total cost to utilize my workflow, followed by a step-by-step -step breakdown of how I made the video playing on screen. The only requirement for this workflow is having an NVIDIA GPU with at least 8GB of VRAM. If you do not have one, I will include a comment below with resources on how to complete an alternative method using Google Colab remotely. Here's a breakdown of the software used in the workflow, listed in the order in which they are used. A cheaper alternative is listed on the right, and the difference between the two lists will be explained in the next section of the video. The first and most important software in the workflow is PYTTI by SportsRacer48. It's $5 per month on Patreon and he deserves every penny. He works very hard on the project. Once you join SportsRacer's Patreon, you get access to the PYTTI notebook. There are many settings and parameters used to create the videos I do. I will be explaining those in more detail in subsequent tutorials. For now, I recommend joining the Discord that is an additional benefit of joining the Patreon. There is a wealth of knowledge on the Discord, and a lot anyone can learn from prior conversations. To make videos like I do, you're going to need access to better GPUs, which are only allocated to Pro and Pro Plus subscribers on Colab. Pro Plus is a bit iffy of a subscription, it's good for some people, it isn't for others. The main benefit though is the background execution. You're able to close out a notebook and it will continue running in the background. It's really nice if you're running the notebooks on a laptop or don't wanna leave your computer running overnight. Next, we have Topaz Gigapixel. However, before we get started with that, you will need to download the Google Drive for desktop and the advanced renamer tools. With the Google Drive desktop tool installed, you'll be able to copy your image out folder into your local hard drive, which is much faster than downloading the folder from the web client because Google Drive prepares a zip file, which takes a while to process on their end. Once the folder is finished downloading, it'll look like this. I like to organize it by separating the settings into a settings folder and copying all the frames into a source folder. can quickly be done by reverse sorting by type to quickly pull up the settings file and then entering control A to select all, control clicking the folders and dragging them into source. Next, you need to zero pad the file names. You can do this using advanced renamer. They have a new name function, which increments by one for each frame. Just select the folder, click OK. And next, but most importantly, you need to make sure the files are sorted correctly. As you can see, the new names are on the right. Once it is correct, you can hit start batch. And if you look over, now all of our files are zero padded. Now with everything prepared, I like going back and creating a G folder for the output of Gigapixel. Once that's done, go back to source, command A, and drag all to Gigapixel. Gigapixel not only excels in upscaling images, but also removes a lot of the noise apparent in PYTTI's limited palette model. I recommend scrolling through your images and selecting a few to see how the output looks with the preview on the right. Also, never go with the auto settings because it'll introduce a lot of flickering into your video. For settings, I always use the Art and CG model. Always select the reduce color bleed, otherwise you'll have a ton of flickering. I play around with the suppressed noise, usually around 70 to 80. And then for remove blur, I always have that around 100. Once you're happy with your settings, go down to the save option. And then we're going to change the output directory to the G folder we made initially. Once you select that and hit start, Gigapixel will begin to process each frame. This can usually take a few hours in my case, where I usually go from 1500 to 2000 frames per video. And that is because I always upscale to a little bit over 4K. The reason for upscaling over 4K is in YouTube's backend, they have different allocations for compression based on the resolution and frame rate of your video. So if you want the best looking video, you need to upload at 4K 60 FPS. 
Once Gigapixel is finished, you will have all the frames upscaled to juicy 4K inside of the G folder. Next, we have flow frames. To begin, you first need to browse and select the G folder that we created with all the upscaled images. Once you do that, the output of the video will just be one parent directory up. Then input the FPS you'd like to feed the Rife model in the output FPS for the video. I usually do 60 and then 8x. I always go with the Rife 2.3 model. It has the best quality for limited palette. Under quick settings, it's also important to not ignore the max input height. To see the resolution of your images, just right click one of them and go to details. Finally, lowering the scene changes sensitivity to lowest allowed level of 0.05 really helps flickering. Finally, hit interpolate and wait for it to finish. Once the video has finished processing, if you try to play it in a video player, guess what? It won't work due to the video's insanely high frames per second. This is why the fifth step of the workflow is required, which is Premiere Pro, the editing software I'm using right now. But for projects, what I do is I grab the video output from Flow Frames, drag it into Premiere Pro, create a new sequence. I already have presets set for YouTube, but for you, that setting would just be right here, 60 FPS, 4K, hit OK. Drag it into the timeline. Click a Keep Existing Settings. Go to Speed. You can set it all the way down to 12.5% since we did eight times. Also keep in mind we need to scale down the image because we rendered it a little over 4K, which adds a little sharpness to the end product. Just make sure you scale it to fit the sequence. And there you go, you're good to go. That'll be all for me from now. I got work in the morning and need to go to bed. Like and subscribe.